Hey guys, and welcome to How to Paint an Undying Priest from Blight of Gods. All right, this is pretty special. Uh, it's the first video uh, for my new range of miniatures. And uh, as of this video, you can go to my website, the Blight of Gods website. The link is in the down there, and you can pick this little guy up and uh, download him for free. So he comes with supported files and unsupported files. My new miniature range uh, is now coming with supported files, which is great, and this one is free. So if you want to try painting him up uh, with, with this uh, tutorial, then you're welcome to do so. Uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot coming out this year and uh, this is the first so um, yeah go and check him out it's it's pretty cool but we're gonna be painting him up in um, the uh, the warbands colors which is the undying cult and they use a uh, classic kind of I guess uh, you know uh, necromancer colors or, or sort of evil color schemes you know a nice dark red blacks uh, bone colors etc it's gonna be pretty fun we're using a lot of uh, techniques uh, that I've uh, shown here on the channel over the years and incorporating them into this into this series of uh, videos uh, on the blighted gods range as you'll see over the course of the year and uh, so for the reds we're using a blue base moving up through a, a nice red um, fist on red from GW and up into uh, oranges and yellows so it should be really nice that'll be for the for the robes and uh, the other areas as well we'll be going into that too so uh, yeah I'm really excited to be uh, showing this for you just so you know this one has been printed on a frozen uh, 4k mighty uh, with 4k gray resin uh, so you can see the detail comes out pretty good I've been uh, really really uh, pushing uh, my skills over the course of the year to uh, you know produce a, a miniatures range which is actually uh, nice to paint so I'm hoping that uh, that shows through in the, in the these miniatures. I've been painting them uh, you know, off camera and uh, they do come up pretty well. I'm not going to say that they're on the level of GW, but uh, they're, they're, they're pretty cool to paint. Uh, you know, the, the shapes and forms that I've been able to create here are, are pretty fun. There are some, you know, tighter areas and smaller details on some of the parts, but for the most part, they're, they're pretty good. And a lot of them are sort of single piece or very minimal number of pieces uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the miniature. So they're much faster to put together uh, and they all have little sculpted bases and so on. And uh, I won't take them off the base here, but underneath uh, they actually have little pegs to sit into the base, so they're a bit more secure. So you, uh, when you're gluing them, so that that makes them uh, uh, pretty nice as well. And there's a little feature under there, a little arrow. So if you get confused as to which is the front, uh, you actually can tell which is the front and the back, which is another little feature I've added uh, for anyone that cares about that sort of thing. But um, and there's also instructions uh, with the files, so you'll be able to follow along and actually glue it together properly. Uh, not that it should be very confusing to see how to put something as simple as this together, but uh, you you know just in case uh, for those that like it uh, it's in there so that's pretty cool but I'll stop waffling on now and uh, let's get on to this uh, paint job eh Okay, one last thing before we start. So the Blood of Gods miniature range is a 3D printable range, which means that um, they are files. So you'll need a 3D printer to print them out and uh, so you can paint them. So this isn't a uh, physical uh, range. So that means, you know, cast resin or plastic or that sort of thing. Uh, these are just uh, files for 3D printing. So you will need access to a printer if you want to do this. So just in case there's new people here watching this video and don't understand what all that is, um, this is a 3D printable range of miniatures. So uh, at least at this stage maybe in the future it changes but for now uh, these are all files for 3d printing okay so i've got that disclaimer out the way uh, let's get started on this paint job Okay, so to start with, we're going to begin with the base. And the reason why we do that is because and when we come time to do the, the robes and, and you know, the, the, the flesh areas, the feet, etc., uh, if you do the base later, you might end up, uh, you know, getting a lot of those the, those colours on, onto the model itself. So we start with that base. And you'll see me go through and build up a dark grey uh, base colour, in this case, Necromancer Cloak. And then uh, once we've got that down, we move through uh, successive dry brushes of lighter greys up into white. And that just gives us a nice, sort of ashen base to begin with and then uh, coming in with some browns, uh, Rhinox High, Doomball, Bala Brown and a little bit of um, Ushabti uh, Bone uh, just to give a little bit of a uh, difference with the, the sort of the rubble that's around the, the skull there and uh, finally uh, coming in with some uh, shades, so green and, and uh, the sepia shade mixed with Lamia Medium uh, to basically give us a little bit of staining and a bit of colour and life to that base and we'll come back to that skull later when we do the bone but this is gives you a nice uh, solid base to work with uh, and, and build on top of and we'll echo these colors later in, in, in the mini itself. 
So while we have those colors out, we, we may as well get stuck into that armor. And so you're going to see I've set up a, a bit of a gradient there going through Necromancer Cloak, Dungeon Gray, Uniform Gray up through uh, mixing with white, um, you know, about five or, five or six steps there. And we're just going to begin uh, highlighting those black areas. So in this case, it's the, the sort of the shoulder armor that he's wearing, uh, the little um, sort of headdress that the familiar has and uh, the staff. And so we're going through and just uh, building in those highlights. These are line edge highlights using a fine brush and just build building up each layer. So getting finer and finer with each uh, successive lighter layer. And you're just trying to keep it nice and tight. If you want something to look really black, the idea is to keep your, your highlights as, as, as tight as possible and you, you, the, the black will read as black. If the highlights are very broad, it's gonna look more gray. So that's just the basic theory on, on black. So we just move through that. And then finally, uh, what I like to do often, which you'll see on, on the channel a lot, is uh, doing a bit of contrast glazing. So we've got some Achillean green and some Pterodon uh, turquoise always there and mixed with the the uh the contrast medium and we're just doing a very very soft glaze of, of the, uh, tinting the colors to a blue and a green uh, just to give some variation and uh then finally what i like to do a lot is uh, play with contrasts of specularity on the paint and so i don't uh, uh spray varnish my models at the end so we get different sorts of levels of shine and so for things like this lacquered armor and things like that i like to put a satin varnish on it so i use a bit of a layer of satin varnish there at the end to just to add a bit of bump and, and shine to those areas to separate them from the other materials on the model. And now we're on to the red robe. So this is a real fun one. So red's a really great color to do. So you'll see I've set up my gradient there and we're going from a dark blue base, uh, the night blue there, through Mephiston red, uh, right up through Troll Slayer, orange and into deep yellow. And there's about seven stages there. So to begin with, we uh, start to uh, lay down a, a base color of that blue. And that, that's just to uh, break away from the black underneath and give us a nice uh, blue shadow. And then as we move up, we go into our first real base color, and that's the Mephiston mixed with the blue, and that gives us our dark red. And uh, you're basically painting the whole area. You'll see me go around and, and pick out most of it. There'll be a bit, bit of feathered edges there and areas where we leave a little bit of that blue showing through. So you don't want to completely cover the blue. Uh, and then we get into our main color of the robes, which is the Mephiston. And from there, then you're starting to make decisions about how much of the darker tone you want to show through in the deeper recesses of the folds of the robes and how much of the top areas you want to paint. And so that's that's really an aesthetic decision that you'll have to start making and you can feather those out on the on the ends there to allow those colors to blend and then when, as we move into the mid-tones and then into the highlights now you're being more selective you're, you're going down a brush into a fine detail brush and now you're doing line highlights so the Mephiston mixed with the orange and uh, the the next stage up which is almost all just uh, the Troll Slayer orange and you're starting to do much finer highlights a little bit like the black you're starting to get much sharper if you go too broad here you end up with a very orange look so you want to keep those orange highlights very uh, tight and fine. And then as we move into those final stages of the Troll Slayer and the deep yellow with the Troll Slayer mix, there our spot highlights are a very fine um, edge highlight. So you're just looking for points on, on, the, on the robes where you're uh, allowing it to uh, really fire up to a bright color. Now bearing in mind that these colors will actually soften and darken as they dry. So don't be too afraid of the brightness of it. It will actually dull down over time. So you should end up with a really, really fun uh, red robe. Now we're up to the bone areas. So we've got the cloth, the skulls, both on the on the mini and on the base. Uh, you know, all those sort of areas. On, on the familiar as well, the the sort of uh, area around the headdress, around the the, the priest himself. Uh, there's a whole lot of uh, bone areas on this model, and you'll see me just set up a gradient there, going through US Field Drab, which is a nice dark brown, uh, blending up through a shabti and then into straight a shabti, a shabti mixed with white and then more white. So we've got our nice little gradient there, and you'll just see me build it up from that dark base and then slowly highlight up, just like you've done with the robes and with the armor. There's really no difference here. And it's up to you how bright you really want to go, but roughly these steps is, is pretty good to getting a nice a nice cream color uh, result. And so we're just going through and feathering that in on the cloth to give it a bit of a bit of texture, uh, a bit more smooth on, on some of the bone areas. And uh, you know, around the headdress, you've got those sort of tight spaces behind the head. Uh, you don't have to paint all of this uh, all the way up to the, the full highlights. You want to keep some of those areas dark and let them uh, fade away into darkness because we want to, we want to add more, more contrast to the areas of, of focus, which is uh, the head and around the head. So that headdress has a nice uh, frame and you want to highlight the edges, but not the interior so that you get a nice good uh, dark backdrop for that face once it's all complete. 
And then at the end, once you've got the, the bone colors down, then we're just coming back in with some of those shade colors again. So uh, the, the red, the purple, and uh, the green and brown, and just uh, with the Lamia medium, and just adding a little bit of glazing here and there to uh, stain the colors. This is where we're bringing some of that green and brown from the base up into the model. So uh, just to make those bones seem a little bit older and a bit more you know, aged. And uh, this is where you can add more of that color into the back of that headdress so that you get a nice, uh, deep, colorful shadow there. So that helps just to diffuse some of the details that you may or may not have been able to get to with the brush and uh, then finally on that familiar using a bit of that red and purple uh, just to give it an otherworldly look because this is a magical familiar you know it's a it's a you know something that stores magic for the for the wizard so we just want to give it that little bit of a uh, fantastical element to the to the that, that, that little guy there and uh, also harken and, and and echo some of the color that's underlying the the red robes the blue and the red and so on and now we're on to one of my favorite color combinations, Grimoire Purple and uh, Corpse Power from Army Painter. And so we're setting up a gradient here for the flesh on the on, on the on the priest. And so you've got that Grimoire Purple as your base, and then you've got uh, mixed in with the Corpse Power for your, your first sort of real base color of that flesh, and then up through um, successive layers of Corpse Power, then mixed with white. And so you're, you're just basing that in with that, that Grimoire Purple to begin with, just to again, uh, take away the black. And then your first real base color is that Corpse Power mixed in with the Grimoire Purple. And that gives you your darker shadows and with, with flesh you really want to be careful how dark you go you don't want every single crease and area on the flesh to be uh, all the same darkness so you want to vary that up you only want to keep the the darker spots for the very very dark areas and again with a model like this uh, where you've got a lot of interior areas you're, you want to leave those those inner areas the darker purple so it creates a kind of colorful shadow like we did with the back of the headdress and so you don't have to paint it all the way up to the brightest brights and so just like the robes we're going through and just uh, picking out the top surfaces of the of the of the flesh, uh, paying special attention to the face and the tops of the arms and the hands, and just building up that brightness until you're getting to that corpse power mixed with white for those like final spot highlights to give you some real contrast. And again, paying most attention uh, to the face. And then we move on to that cute little familiar. And so uh, we want to, again, uh, you know, uh, reinforce the idea that he's a magical entity. And so uh, not that that's not obvious to look at him. He's definitely not uh, not human. Uh, he's something else. And uh, so we've got that uh, night blue and purple, raw purple and toxic mist there. And so we build up a little gradient there, again, going through blue up into purple, up into toxic mist uh, with a little bit of white mixed in at the end for the spot highlights. And it's the same deal, just building on those muscular uh, forms, uh, creating light on the tops, not worried too much about the undersides and the interiors where the brush is harder to get to. You want to uh, allow for that shadow, that fall off in, in light, and uh, just focus on the main areas and build up those flesh tones. It's only a very small area, so it should be uh, pretty fun and, 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 uh, and quick to do. And then finally, uh, my favorite step. And so with this, it's the color glazing. So we've got those shade colors out again, the uh, the red, the purple, the blue, and the yellow, and uh, with the Lambia medium. And you're, you're blending them down into a very, very thin glaze, very transparent, being very careful not to overdo this. This isn't a wash. You're placing the color in, uh, probably starting from the red, going through the purple, then the blue, then the yellow, and just being very careful about it. And you're trying to simulate the, the blood under the surface of the skin and add a bit of life to that, to that flesh tone because it is very desaturated. And so you're just adding red into little spots around the around the eyes, the nose, uh, you know, the 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 knuckles, that sort of thing, the elbows, and anywhere where the bone of the of the skeleton comes to the surface. So less less uh, less fat and muscle tissue around it, like the top of the skull, etc. You might add a little tiny dab of that yellow. Now be very careful with the yellow because it is highly pigmented, and you'll end up with like too much yellow, and so your your flesh will look a bit gaunt, just a little bit bruised and a little bit off. Uh, it's okay. This is a necromancer, so that's cool. But you. You want to you want to pay special attention to that color so you only use it very sparingly but you'll end up with a really lovely uh you know mottled effect of different colors and, and really uh bring the flesh to life and now we're on to the metallics. So I really enjoy using true metallics. So here we've got some Runelord brass, uh, some lead belcher, and some of the um, the silver. And so we're just going around and painting each element in as, as, as we feel necessary. So I've got some on the staff there, on the orb that he's carrying, uh, the belt, etc. Even his little uh, sort of um, eye, eye piece that he has and, and the jewelry around uh, his left side of his ear. Uh, there's a few areas there where you can do the metallics. And so you just pick out those areas uh, and, and just get all that done. And then finally come in with a bit of silver and just highlight them up so we're sort of pre-highlighting them so we don't have to do it later uh, when we come in with the uh, the color glazing step and with the color glazing uh, one of my 
all-time favorite things to do is on True Metallics, and you'll see a lot of those videos on the channel. And here we're using that red, the purple, and the blue. Uh, just to add a bit of life to the, those metals and, and really make them stand out. So uh, again, just like the, the skin, you're placing it in, you're not really washing the surface. We're just, because these areas are very small, we're not going back in and using the sepia and the nylon oil like I often do. We're just using the red and the purple and the blue here uh, just to add a little bit of life in, mix with that Lamia medium. And you should end up with a really nice, deep, rich uh, set of metals between the the, uh, the lead belcher and the Rune Lord brass. Then we have the leathers and the furs. And so for this, we're using the Rhinox uh, hide, the Doom Bull, the Bala Brown, and the bone. And the bone's there for the final highlight on the furs. And also I use that on uh, the little pincers, which are very hard to see, but they're in amongst the furs there from the familiar, these little hands. And I just use the bone there to highlight those up, but it's very small. So you might just miss those altogether. It's perfectly fine. They are tucked into the furs there. Uh, so basically you're just going up just like we do on every other surface, starting with the dark color first, so the Rhinox hide, and just building up through those browns and up into the bone. And, and you know, with the leathers, you're trying to feather out little scratches and little marks to simulate the weathering on, on, the, on, the, on the leathers. Uh, but, you know, paying more attention to the edges and not to the centers, essentially. And so you should end up with a very weathered uh, leather look. And with the furs, again, it's the ends of the furs, the, the, the tips, etc., that you're trying to uh, make a little brighter and keep the shadows and the darker color in, into the centers of those, uh, those uh, follicles, those hair follicles on the fur. You should end up with a really nice result. And then we have these little sort of uh, glyphs or, or sort of um, hieroglyphic tablets that, that, that hang off, off, off the priest's belt and off, off his staff and so on. Uh, and so for these, because they're sort of like elements of power, I guess, or, or, or magical uh, incantations, I wanted to give it a little bit of an otherworldly look. So I used a blue gray here. And so we're just doing a couple of layers up through pale gray blue and into white and just uh, building that up to the edges just to give a little bit of difference and also uh, touch on the blue that we have uh, in the figure itself in the, in the undertones. And so we get a connection there with the coloring and also a, a sort of a, a another difference another type of blue that's occurring on the model and the last touch is the gems. And so for these, we're going back to one of my great colors that I love or a couple of colors that I love. So dark sea blue, sick green and crack and skin mixed with a bit of white. And so we have a nice little gradient there and you're just building up the highlights through the greens on, on the undersides of those gems and leaving the top quite dark. And the, and the top of the gem is where you leave for your spot of white. And that, that simulates light hitting the, the, the gem itself. So that's the way you do your gems. And then finally, uh, I use a little bit of gloss varnish from GW just to really make them up. Uh, pop and shine. And there we go, one undying priest all done. Let's take a look. Well, I've waited a long time to say that. Okay, let's see. So yeah, you can see how he comes out. I mean, this was uh, beyond fun for me. I mean, you know, it's my own sculpt, right? So it's it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, but he, he comes up really cool. And, and as I said, I'm not going to say these things are, you know, on the level of GW, but uh, the details are nice. You know, you can do a lot of a lot of different things with this. Uh, there's a lot of good areas there to do blends, etc. And uh, yeah, you get something really fun and interesting at the end. And they definitely have their own look, right? Um, yeah. I really enjoyed doing this. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this too. And, uh, you know, you may have printed him out and, and had a go at painting him. Uh, as I said, there are some tricky areas, you know, underneath the arms, etc. But uh, overall, it's, it's it's a pretty fun one to do. Uh, so yeah, I'll leave a nice image for him at the end in the paint list as I normally do. But I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit that like button, subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.